happy distaff day, fiber friends. Yay! If you're new here, hi, welcome. I'm Evie and I make yarn. And today I'm going to be making yarn. I'm also going to be making my own distaff and I'll show you how you can make one too. Um, and we're gonna talk about distaff day. What is distaff day? <laughs> distaff day is January 7th. It is a holiday sometimes called Saint Distaff Day, although there was no actual person named Saint Distaff. The saint comes in there because it is a unofficial Catholic holiday. It was the day following the 12 days of Christmas when women would get back to spinning, back to work. The festivities and the feasting was over. I guess there's also some association with the boys pulling pranks on the girls during this time. So maybe sort of an April Fool's-y kind of feel to it. Uh, back in the day, I mean back back in the day, we're talking medieval Europe here. So that was, that's, that's a while ago. <laughs> But it's also referred to as Rock Day, and that refers to the whorl on a spindle. I'm going to tell you what I do every year for Distaff Day. This is my own personal celebration. And the really cool thing is that a lot of spinners have been claiming this holiday because it's not really a day that within society women go back to work after Christmas. Although my kids did go back to school today, so... A lot of spinners are claiming this as their spinning day holiday. It's really neat to see the different uh, festivities that spinners do. A lot of guilds will have spin-in days or uh, people will have a day where they clean off their bobbins to get ready for the new projects of the year. And I've chosen to do something somewhat similar to that. So this was the first uh, Distaff Day celebration that I had. Um, I cleaned off my bobbins and this was a little bit of project from everything through the whole year, um, which I thought was pretty cool. And I had a lot of fun with this the first year that I did it. So I decided that I would take a piece of every project I did and put it into a container. I got a frame, it was advertised to keep, oh, my lights. It was, uh, this was advertised to put corks in or collect something. The top opens up just like that. And all year long, 2019, I put a piece of every project I did in here. I just took a little fuzz or cleaned off the carter or whatever and I threw it in there. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, I'm trying to tip it so it doesn't catch all my recording lights. <laughs> if you've been watching my channel, you'll maybe see some videos in there. <laughs> Pretty cool. So what I'm going to do for my little Distaff Day celebration that you're joining me for is to run all of this through my carter. I'm going to make a bat out of this. Then, I will be making my very own wrist distaff and you can join me and make your own as well. And then I'm gonna try it out because I've never used a wrist distaff before. I'm going to spin my special bat onto a spindle and we'll see what kind of yarn comes out of that. But I'm very excited and I think it's time to get started. So let's go. While I'm carding this, I thought I should probably take a moment to talk about what a distaff actually is because some people have different ideas. And I know when I started researching it, I didn't realize that the term is as broad as it actually is. So a distaff really is anything that holds your fiber supply while you're spinning. It was originally used with spindle spinning and then it was also used with wheel spinning Sometimes a distaff is as simple as a stick. Sometimes it has its own stand where it can be placed on the floor next to a wheel. There are some wheels that have their own special place to stick a distaff into where the wheel itself holds the distaff. Of course, if you're using a spindle, that wouldn't work. So there are different kinds of distaffs that would fit into the crook of the arm. Sometimes they could be placed through a loop or onto a belt. And uh, as you'll see soon, 
we can make a very simple one on our wrist, which is actually going to be made out of yarn. It's a tool that can be decorative or purely functional in that it could just be as simple as a stick or a dowel rod. A lot of people think that distaffs were only for flax, but that is not the case. I thought that until I started researching and found out that distaffs can be used for wool, flax, hemp, cotton, anything that you're spinning that you want to hold out of the way of the spinning. This is one of the distaffs I have. It is an Ashford distaff, and it came with my Ashford Elizabeth wheel. I did purchase that used, and this came with it. Um, but I have lost the extension piece that attaches it to the wheel, which honestly is sort of common because when you find antique wheels, they so, so, so often are missing the distaff. They come apart in pieces like this and they're just very easy to lose, especially if it gets taken apart to be placed out of the way. Someone comes across it and this is not something that you can just look at and realize, oh, because this is a tool that doesn't really give away its intended purpose, not by looking at it, at least in today's modern society. But this is what a distaff that attaches to a spinning wheel looks like. And let's go see if it fits into my new antique wheel that is part of a restoration project that I am going to be doing this year. Here we are, this is my new to me <laughs> wheel. It's probably about 100 years old. It's a double drive. It was originally a flax wheel, most likely, because it has a hole here for a distaff. And I've seen other wheels of this style that had the flax type of distaff attached to them. This wheel is a mess and needs a lot of work. She is not in spinnable shape, but I have this Ashford distaff. that goes way up to that point there. And check this out. This wheel has a spot for a distaff. So if you see an antique wheel with a hole in the table like this, this is its original purpose was to hold a distaff. And there it is, it fits right in there. It's perfect. And then you can swing this around while you're spinning and have your fiber supply right here. And away you go. You'll spin it right there and it holds everything you need. Just like that. That is really cool. So my Ashford distaff fits into my antique wheel. In order to make a wrist distaff, you are going to need some yarn. You'll need some scissors, a teeny tiny crochet hook, or something that you could use to thread beads on. So obviously, of course, you're going to need beads. It just has to be able to go through the bead. You will need a giant crochet hook. I think this is a Q. I think it's a size Q. I'll double check that. And if you want to be super precise, uh, you can use a tape measure to measure the length of your yarn. So I used my tape measure and I measured out 12 strands of about 10 feet. And it doesn't have to be perfection on this. It can have a little play. Tangles are not good though. What did I do? Now, you're gonna have probably, let's measure, let's say about 14 inches, which is about maybe 36 centimeters. And that'll be about the length for the dangly bits. I'm going to make a slip knot, leaving that much room on the end. And then once I have my slip knot, and like I said, it doesn't have to be perfectly exact, but you do need to have enough room. When I have my slip knot, I'm going to use my giant crochet hook. I believe this is a size Q, and I'm going to crochet. along the length of this until I have about the same amount of tassel -y style yarn on the other end. You'll see what I mean. Let's just get this part done. 
When you get to the other end, we're going to just bring it through the loop to finish it off. Just like that. There it is. All right, just like that. This is our dust off. To finish it off, we're going to cut these on the ends so that they're even, but we do want to keep that length on there. And then we will add some beads to give them a little bit of weight. That evened it off. So now we can just add some beads. Yay! First things first, here is the distaff. It has some weight to the tassels, some tangles as well. Okay, there we go. So I had this one little short one. I don't know what happened there, but I have my bat here. If I start spinning, this is big, it's bulky, it's in the way, it's very frustrating and annoying. Can't have that. So that is why, because it'll fall down and get caught and then it'll make a mess. Right, can't have that. So that is where the wrist distaff comes in. So the way we're gonna do this is the same way I attach the leader actually. So we're gonna come over, bring the tassel part through that loop and I have to catch my little shorty. Okay. And then just bring it around so it's like a bracelet with long tassels. And the really cool thing is that because I'm doing it this way, I won't have join after join after join after join on the yarn. That's the beauty of a distaff because it can hold a lot of fiber. Um, whereas otherwise I would be just tearing strips and constantly doing joins. So let's do some spinning. So I have my roving because it came off of the roving carter. It looks like a strip torn off a bat. It's about a hand's width wide, um, fingertip to thumb tip. So I'm gonna strip it one more time so that it is a little thinner. And then I'll, ooh, there's some yarn in there. That'll be interesting when I come to that. So now I have a very, very long strip. It's a little thinner and I'm going to uh, put it onto my wrist distaff. And this is how that works. So I'm gonna take about half of the tassels and put them on either side of my roving. Uh, so it's sort of straddling the roving. Now I'm gonna bring the roving to about midway and without twisting it, I'm holding it here with my thumb so that it's not going to twist around. And what I want to do is just wrap without twisting. Wrap, wrap, wrap. And it doesn't need to be uh, very tight on there. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, super firm, but uh, secure enough. Okay, so I'm just wrapping without twisting. Wrap, wrap, wrap. There it is. This is my distaff. And now I am ready to spin. And as I spin, it will twist. <laughs> um, it will twist up at the top so that it unwinds itself. So if you find that it's a little loose and it's just kind of coming undone and flopping down and falling apart, that's okay. Then just rewrap it uh, a smidge higher up. And the weights from the beads, I'm just gonna scooch it a little, I'm cheating kind of. The weights from the beads will um, help keep it secure because the dangle uh, weights will hold it together uh, at the point where it's kind of pinched together. So there, there it is. And now I'm ready to spin and everything is held out of the way of my spindle, just like that. And I can spin and draft 
from this point. So let's do some spinning. Where's my spindle? I'm losing everything, including my mind. But right now, let's just watch the drafting and the distaff at work. Pretty cool. Shameless self-promotion while I'm spinning. Oh my gosh, I, I just spun my, this is my cord for my microphone. And I just spun my microphone. Hang on here. So I'm doing a project this year. I am changing my wardrobe from an accidental wardrobe, uh, which basically means that the things in my wardrobe have been acquired by accident, either through I went to a thrift shop and they actually had something in my size, so I bought it because it fit, not because it was a style or material or anything like that that I liked or um, hand-me-downs, things like that. I just have not been very intentional with my wardrobe. And on top of that, I've just really started to realize that um, there are problems with clothing brands beyond just the sort of the fast, fast fashion throwaway clothes that we think of as being the main problems. Um, they're really changing the landscape of clothing and uh, there's just a lot of pervasive problems in the whole industry. Um, terrible problems. So I am going to be blogging my journey this year as I change my wardrobe to natural materials, environmentally friendly uh, materials and dyes and processes. I have a goal to have a certain number of handmade by me items by the end of the year uh, and also to find some good fair trade uh, organizations and clothing to support. So that's going on over there and if you'd like to check that out that's at jillianeve.com. So far this is working great. I have all this fiber I don't have to hold in my hand and it's not tangling with my single. Just my microphone is, but not my fiber. <laughs> Happy distaff day everyone.